it is time for a job change. And it's one that, you know, has kind of been a long time coming, but I've been an IT manager or am currently an IT manager for my day job. I've been doing YouTube for the past five years, which I've really enjoyed doing, but I need to put more time into becoming a developer. And you might be thinking, well, Titus, don't you have like the Windows toolbox and, and the utility and all that other stuff? So you kind of already are a developer. Yeah, but I really haven't put much time into it, not the time that it really needs to become the best. And I really know it, it can get there. So I, I want to kind of take you through these things when it comes to, one, the Windows utility and all the different things I've done just in the past week, because over the past couple weeks, really, where I've dedicated tons of time into it. And then also talk about the Linux toolbox, because many Windows users going to Linux are going to want something that's just like a one button fix or, hey, I want all these customizations and you just push one thing and it just does it. It sees what type of system you're on and then automatically adjusts everything you need for that. And I have all the knowledge to do both those things. And I'm like, I just need to sit down and do it. So let's get on the desktop, show you kind of where Windows utility is and kind of where I see Linux toolbox kind of going too, because we have these, these both these tools and I'm really developing at such a rapid rate. And I want to just share with you kind of what the future looks like and all the contributors and sponsors and other stuff that has happened with specifically these two pieces of software and why I'm just kind of jazzed and just excited. So let's get into it. So first off on this, I have this release schedule. I might have talked about this in a prior video, but uh, we've really expanded this. And when I say we, I got to really show all the contributors just in the past two weeks where it doesn't feel like I've done much over here on YouTube. Um, Every single one of these line items is a pull request, which is a code review that I've done or I've committed extra code to. Uh, and I wanted to actually do a, probably a full Windows utility, kind of going over all these changes. But there's been a, a few pull requests just, just as I've kind of gone through here. As you see, we got some new contributors and I'm averaging about three to four new pull requests every single day to this project. And just... To give you an idea of how popular this project has become, this was the last stable release I've put out at the very end of June. It has already been run almost 300,000 times in just two weeks. So that's that, that's a lot of usage. That is a lot of users, uh, unless that's just somebody with a bot out there really just downloading this thing like crazy. Kind of wanted to go through and show just the different automation that's also gone into this because there's been a lot of contribution specifically with automation uh, CICD type deployments where you, we now have documentation with a lot of this where if you go into here and you need any when you till documentation go hey what's going on how do you run it there's this introduction. We have a basic user guide where it gives just a nice little bookmarks and go hey what about uh, this type of thing what's going here. We still have to fill out some of this, but the the bones are all here and anybody can submit this and it'll just automatically update all this documentation on any deployment or any pull requests we get. And adding this in was kind of a huge thing. So you can see kind of going into driver integration, Ventoy, under kind of understanding MicroWin. And I'm really going to be putting a lot more time in MicroWin uh, as well, because that's just something I really want to put some more polish on, because right now I'd say that's the weakest part of the toolbox right now uh, that has the most issues. It works pretty good for like Windows 11 ISOs, but sometimes on Windows 10, it's like, eh, it could be better. And the automated releases that we have over here uh, also have new scripts up. So like, let's say you want to see like the latest and greatest of the new toolbox. We now have a WinDev branch. So let's launch into that. And then we're going to go launch terminal with admin. And I'm going to paste this in just to kind of showcase some of the, the cool new features. So we'll have this. And I'll, I'll do a deep dive video kind of overcasing all those different PRs because there's just so much going on from uh, progress bars to extra icons down here to a little bit more cleaner layout, a, a lot more clarity in the actual presentation. Uh, you can see a couple of these things have been changed around 
Uh, and some things have actually been removed, some things have been added, uh, but the big thing here is it just works and is a lot more seamless as we put a lot more development time directly into here. Uh, and I wanted to actually add a sponsors button to just say, hey, anybody that sponsors me on GitHub, I want to put you directly in the toolbox just with a click of a button. It kind of is a little Easter egg for those that do donate monthly over on uh, GitHub. So if you do, it's actually going to show me in the readme portion of the actual Win utility project. And I'm also going to add this to the Linux utility project as there's a lot of carryover between all the things I've learned with Windows utility that I can carry into other pieces of software. And <laughs> it is just so darn cool. I've just been absolutely enamored with doing this. So I want to show you the Linux toolbox right now, too, as most people have seen this and there's other videos on the channel kind of going into it. But let me show you kind of what's in store to the future, why I want to dedicate at least the next month really diving deep into Linux, trying out different ones uh, and making sure it's agnostic as well between distributions. So whether you're on a Debian or Ubuntu based distribution or an Arch based distribution, this this toolbox will work for you. So I, I did want to mess with the naming scheme too much. So instead of win util, it's called Lin util. And this is kind of where it's at right now. The infancy stages as I just did my very first public release yesterday, and uh, I haven't even updated any of the screenshots. It's actually written in Rust, and you might be thinking, Titus, uh, uh, did you just learn Rust overnight and then just didn't tell anybody? No, and before you say, hey, is it like GPT? No. Yeah, we, we tried that. I, it's pretty hilarious. I actually went on live stream on Titus Tech Talk and we tried to use GPT to do some stuff. It always ends in disaster, by the way. If you just need clarity of like a line of syntax, great. Use GPT all day long. But if you wanted to write a full function for you, you're going to be in for a wild ride. So I have plenty of live streams showing that. But no, actually, a uh, big shout out to just Linux user. He was actually wanted to help me out, Andre over here. Uh, he actually wrote a lot of the shell. And I, I added a few things and polished it a little bit on some things I was having issue with. But he was like 90 something percent of the actual Rust code came from him. So I want to shout him out first and then go into how this thing runs, just like Linux utility or the Windows utility, I wanted a one line run. Now, right now we're doing it kind of a little long curl command. I'm going to probably fix this. I'll probably make a uh, christitis.com forward slash lin util or lin, uh, or maybe I just call it Linux. I don't know what I'll tell me in chat. Tell me in the comments. What do you want that shortcut to be? Is I'll just shortcut this down so it's not this long uh, executable. So then you can just type it in to your shell. So let's uh, go ahead and quit out of this. So from our bash or any terminal, you could do this in Mint, Ubuntu, whatever it is. I'm gonna just put this one command in, launch it, and you'll notice you now have a very simple menu. Now this menu can do a lot of different things, but if you want my bash prompt, um, and just to kind of show this, let's say we remove bash RC, and let's relaunch real fast. You'll now see my, my all my bash configurations wiped out, right? Uh, and we can even go further and just like delete Starship and completely remove this on a fresh install. The idea behind this is to go back through all my library of videos and instead of having you try and follow around and copy and paste and modify it to your distro, this will just detect everything and do it for you. So let's do it. So I'm gonna curl it again. And from here, let's set up the bash prompt. It'll go ahead, download any dependencies missing on your system. It'll detect what's missing, copy anything that needs to be copied, redo the configuration, install fast fetch, any other dependencies that are needed to make your life easier, such as Zoxide, Starship, all those things in just a matter of seconds. So then you quit out, you launch back in and everything's fixed. So the cool thing here is you take an hour or two of tweaking in the old days of doing it and I can build it into just seconds of runtime and, and fix your system. And we could do that across the board. So my NeoVim configuration, I put that in there as well. I also have a couple different customizations depending on where you are in your Linux journey. So uh, the system setup's not done yet, 
but I was doing, hey, if you're building out pieces of software, you know, building from source that type of thing, I have a build prerequisites that just installs all the essential tools like make and see make and uh, build essentials and those types of things. It'll just install them all for you and then it's good. Or let's say you want a game on Linux, a gaming dependencies button where you just click it, it'll install Steam, Lutris, Proton GE, do all the same customizations to your system and then your gaming off and going. So you got 32 bit libraries on there and all the stuff's ready to go. And uh, that that's that's pretty cool, right? So that's the idea behind the system setup. And then for the Titus dot files, there's a lot of times where people have dot files in Linux, you know, like, hey, I need this customization, but I just don't know how they customize that. Uh, so like I have a custom Rofi file that has this custom launcher and what Rofi looks like without this, which let's just wipe out my whole Rofi configuration. We're just going to go dot config Rofi and we're just going to delete the entire Rofi directory. So now when I try and do the Rofi command, this is what it looks like without any customization kind of sucks, right? But again, in comes the tool. We launch into it. We just go down into dot files and say, hey, uh, fix my Rofi. All right, about one, two, three, like three or four seconds there, right? Now let's launch Rofi. Seamless, right? Just seconds. And that's, I really am just obsessed with getting all these things done in a granular format that just fixes systems, whether it's on Arch, whether it's on Debian, Ubuntu, and then you can just do all these customizations with a click of a button. And uh, I think it's great. So that's that's why I'm so excited about this stuff because we can, we, we're can we doing it right now and it's great. And, and kind of how I'm able to do this is with a lot of your support with YouTube, whether it's the support on the Windows toolbox side of things, people have bought the $10 wrapper. But the big thing here is I really, in every one of these big projects, I'm just going to, list sponsors, my GitHub sponsors, because these are just monthly, like $5 a month just comes into my GitHub and that's 95%. It's better than any Twitch sub or YouTube sub. I really appreciate those two, those help out. Uh, but but for the GitHub projects like this, where you really wanna support the development directly, uh, doing a GitHub sponsor is a huge thing. So I'm gonna add that as a, kind of an Easter egg on all my projects and to a readme file and then just as like a somewhere in the actual program itself it'll probably be hidden in like a settings menu and uh, kind of like the about menu kind of thing and then also all the contributors that actually helped kind of push me forward i'm able to learn code so much faster learn a lot of these complex things because of all these contributors and their contributions and say hey titus you're screwing up here you need to do this and then they'll put a pr in and then i can learn all that stuff so when we look at just like the ci cd uh deployments and those types of things where it's just this continuous automation that kind of goes these workflows have gotten to where we're going through and we're just running tons of GitHub actions every time, hey, this happens, do X, Y, Z kind of thing. And I am just so darn excited about this. I think it's amazing. I think we're gonna do great things with it and really take FOSS to just a, a level of, that is very, and show, show the world, hey, FOSS projects can work in every single operating system. And honestly, I think I will be able to make enough money to sustain it even with like reduced YouTube videos and those types of things and then just live stream this as it goes on. So whether it's over on Twitch or Titus Tech Talk, if you want to see it and you're like, hey, I'm Jones in the talk or see a, see some a video from Titus, typically I'll be live streaming a lot of this. So like here, like, hey, Titus, I have a great idea for this. Just tell me. You can even tell me in the comments on this video, but also on a live stream and uh, I'm just really excited for this job change. Uh, really, it, I, I, I'm still doing YouTube. I'm still doing my day job. So it's not really a change per se. I'm just putting a lot more time and effort behind this because I think this is going to help out a ton of people. And uh, I look forward to the future. 